Welcome back to the workshop everyone. It's been a while since I last uploaded a build video, but that's because I've been away shooting series two of the Out of the Woodwork podcast by Axminster Tools. It was a lot of fun, but now it's time to get back into the workshop. Talking about the podcast, I just finished uploading series one on the channel. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check it out. I interviewed some fantastic makers. And in series two, we've got some more inspirational guests learning about their background, how they got started, how their business works. It's gonna be great and uh, I think you're really gonna enjoy listening to it. So make sure to watch out for when series two comes out. That's gonna be exclusively on Axminster's YouTube channel or every podcast site like Spotify, Apple and Google Podcasts. So, but in this video, it's gonna be the first video of a series of two or three videos on my largest furniture project to date, which is a walnut desk. It's an L-shaped desk. One side of it is a large storage unit, which I'm building in this episode. And in part two, I'm gonna be making the desk area with a geometric style leg and a shallow drawer. And even some cable trays, there's gonna be some slots in the top where charging ports can come out of and get hidden underneath a table and follow along a channel to the plug socket. So it's a really neat desk. It took ages to make. One of the biggest challenges was just the size of this piece, making it in my workshop. I had to get help from my brother a lot, lifting components around, flipping them over if I wanted to work on the other side. It was a great experience and uh, I'm excited for you to see the end result. I lipped all the components with quite a thick lipping. I wanted it to be really strong. So if you kick the desk or if it got knocked, I didn't want any chance of the MDF bruising. And I'm also gonna be adding a heavy chamfer later on. So I needed enough material there to cut into. You would have noticed me glue on quite a thick lipping at one point, and that is for the sliding door grooves. There's gonna be three grooves for three sliding doors in each storage unit. So this build was made out of veneered MDF and solid walnut. Now, because of the size of the piece, I just didn't want you know, the issue with wood movement. There's so many components from the sliding doors to the shelves to the compartments, and even the storage unit is made in two separate components, so it's easy to move and transport. So I wanted those holes to align perfectly when I go to install the desk. I didn't want any uh, risk of wood movement. So veneer boards was the way to go. When I glued on the lipping, you would have noticed I added some parcel tape around the edge of the board, and that was to help prevent squeeze out from sticking to the veneer. I didn't want the issue of trying to remove that later and lifting up some veneer. Also, when I'm using masking tape to tape down the lipping, masking tape sticks to parcel tape really easily, a lot more than wood. And releasing the masking tape after, there's no chance of lifting up that veneer. So quite often with storage units, you see holes along the side of the wall so you can adjust the height of the shelf. I find that quite often shelves aren't adjusted and they just, they stay in the position they're set in, in the first place. So I decided to go on three wooden steps on each side. I thought three different heights was enough, a low, medium and high, and that is most likely to accommodate anything you wanted to put in the top or the bottom of the shelf. I made a few jigs at different heights, so I was gluing the shelf supports at the same height on each side of the storage unit. And to glue them down, I used Type 1 wood glue and O3 adhesive super glue. That allowed me to quickly stick them down and that would act as the clamp while the wood glue could dry for 24 hours and fully cure. This is a really easy way of gluing components down to a flat surface if you don't want to use clamps or if it's difficult to get a clamp to that specific area. Using super glue and wood glue works really well for this application. So I decided to domino the whole carcass together. It's a really easy joint, really strong. It helped me get everything square and uh, tightly fitting. So I'm really happy with that choice. I highly recommend anyone getting a domino if you don't have one. It allows you to build a lot quicker and prototype designs as well really quickly. If you're interested in any of the tools I'm using in this video, then there is a link in the description to Axminster's website. That is an affiliate link. So any purchase you make on Axminster's website, I'll get a small cut with no extra cost to you. So it's a great way of supporting the channel. Just so you know, that link is on all my videos. So if you ever wanna make any purchase, whether it being sandpaper or glue or a machine, then I'd really appreciate it if you do go through my link because it really helps out the channel 
and allows me to keep making these YouTube videos. The storage unit is made in a few stages. First, it's the main unit that you're seeing now, but after this has been glued up, I'm gonna glue on a larger panel on either side to act as a leg to raise the storage unit off the ground. I also glued on a large rail underneath the unit to stop it from sagging. That again is made from veneered MDF with some lipping on the bottom. Throughout the full length of the storage unit, there's gonna be three legs, but because the unit is made in two components for transport, the center leg is gonna be halved between both components. So the two outside legs are gonna be 40 millimeter thick and the two inner legs are gonna be 20. So when they join together, they're gonna to be 40 and they're gonna match the outside legs. So now the whole cabinet is glued together. It's time to add a chamfer to everything. I just put a bearing guided chamfer bit in my trimmer and just went around all the edges. The router bit doesn't leave the cleanest finish. So after I went over all the chamfers with a bit of sandpaper, removing any burns and tear out. Also, I forgot to mention, if you'd like to know what I get up to during the week, then make sure you follow me on Instagram. I post regular videos on behind the scenes, workshop updates, tips and tricks, tutorials, and teasers for upcoming builds. So if that interests you, there is a link in the description to my Instagram. With the sliding doors, I made sure that the top groove was deeper than the bottom groove. So then you can take the doors in and out by lifting them up and sliding them forward. So for the sliding doors, I'm using nine millimeter birch plywood. I'm using plywood for this because it's stronger than MDF and I can get a thinner sliding door. I lipped all the edges and I'm also veneering each side with a lovely sheet of olive ash. I actually got a long 2.4 meter long sheet of olive ash and I cut that up into sections for the sliding door. So the grain follows and continues throughout all the sliding doors and it looks really nice when all the doors are closed on the cabinet. I'm using type one cold press veneer glue. You wanna add a really thin layer of this and that goes with pretty much any glue you use for veneering. You want a really thin layer. You don't want to add too much because the glue can seep through the veneer when you're pressing it and you don't need a lot. I use my vacuum bag and when you're using a vacuum bag, you want another board on the top and bottom to really flatten the piece of veneer. If I just put the sliding door into the vacuum bag, the actual bag itself isn't providing enough pressure to completely flatten the veneer, you need a hard surface on top of it to really squash it down. I really enjoy using Type 1 cold press glue because it sets between 30 and 40 minutes, so it's really quick. I can put it in and take it out really quickly and still work on that component the same day. I don't need to wait overnight. I was very careful when sanding the boards. You definitely don't want to go through the veneer. I went from 150 to 180 grit. Now choosing a handle for the sliding door was quite difficult. I didn't want a raised handle because that would get in the way of the other sliding doors. It might hit into it as you're sliding the doors along. So I wanted the handle to be recessed into the doors. I didn't just want to drill a hole into the doors with a force and a bit and have a round hole. I had the opportunity here to add quite a nice design feature. I decided to cut out some really nice handles on the CNC. I put some walnut into the CNC to match the rest of the desk and I cut some oblong holes sort of donut shaped, and I decided to inlay them into the olive ash sliding doors. So it gave a really nice contrast with the olive ash and also matched the rest of the desk. To install them in, I also used a CNC to cut out a jig that I can then temporarily glue to the sliding doors and use a bearing guided flush trim bit to perfectly create that mortise in the sliding door. And then I added glue on the edge and squeezed that handle into the sliding door. I actually had to use a couple of clamps to force it in. I then sanded the protruding ends from both sides, added the round over and gave it a final hand sand. Added some chestnut products wax into the grooves and that helped the doors slide really nicely. Later on, I'm finishing the whole desk with some chestnut products acrylic lacquer which is really hard wearing and gave a lovely glossy finish. So I hope you enjoyed part one of this big desk build. Make sure you subscribe and turn your notifications on so you're notified as soon as part two is uploaded. Thank you for sticking to the end of the video and I'll see you very soon for the next one.